In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the exposure triangle and demystifying shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, and the effect that those have on your photos. So one of the things that I am always preaching at my workshops is the importance of learning to shoot in manual. When you shoot in automatic modes, whether it's aperture priority, shutter priority, or program mode, the camera is making a lot of decisions for you. And a lot of times it's getting those decisions wrong, in my opinion. Uh, if you've ever went to a sporting event or tried to, to photograph your kids playing a game when it's kind of low, dimly lit, and you've come back with those blurry photos, you know exactly what I mean. The shutter, the shutter speed is not fast enough in those situations to get the look that you're wanting. Or maybe you're wanting to take a landscape photo and it comes back all grainy and noisy. And the reason for that is because the camera is, is deciding that you need a really high ISO to expose the, the photo correctly. So the camera is not as smart as you are you know what you're trying to do and now if you can just understand the, the concept of shutter speed aperture and iso you can actually you know take the photos that you're seeing in your head so one of the ways that i like to explain the the exposure triangle one of the ways i try to describe it to uh, kind of help you visualize what e what each one does is i like to tell people to envision a faucet a sink faucet and so you would have your shutter speed your let's start with shutter speed shutter speed would represent the length of time that your your faucet is on so obviously the longer you have the faucet turned on the more water would soak into the sponge in the sitting in the bottom of the sink so the length of time that that is on represents the shutter speed and, and the same way, uh, the same thing is true with light. The longer that shutter is open, the more light it soaks in. So, so shutter speed would be the length of time that, 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 uh, the faucet is on aperture would be the size of the hole that the water is coming out of. Obviously, you know, if your, if your faucet has a hole, you know, this big, more water is going to come through in that amount of time than if your hole is teeny tiny. So, uh, the, the size of the hole represents aperture. Now, the, the sponge at the bottom of the sink represents ISO. Um, basically, the, the more absorbent your sponge is, the, the higher your ISO is. Your, so, let's start with ISO. ISO is your camera's sensitivity to light. So, you, the higher your, your ISO number gets, the uh, more light, the more sensitive it is to light, so the brighter your picture gets. But the downside to that, the effect that it has on your photo, is that the, the higher your ISO gets, the noisier your image gets, the grainier and lower quality it gets. So that's always going to be a fine balance between how much bright sensitivity to, br to brightness do you need and how much quality do you want. So that's ISO. Aperture. Aperture is the size of the hole in your lens. It's basically like the pupil of your eye. So uh, the bigger that that opening is, the more light it's going to let into your camera and the brighter your photo is going to be. Now the effect the aperture has on your photos is pretty dramatic. It, it, it um, affects your depth of field. So uh, the smaller your hole is, or the larger your f-stop number, that's always kind of a counterintuitive thing. That the higher the number, f-22 represents a smaller hole, and the lower the number, f-2.8 represents a larger hole. So, the smaller your hole is, uh, the the deeper your depth of field is. The more you're going to have in focus, and the larger the opening is the less you're going to have in focus and the shallower your depth of field is. So let, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Um, I've got some photos here in Lightroom and for example, if we look at this portrait, this is a great example of shallow depth of field. Uh, 
Um, she is nice and in focus, and then the background is just like non-existent. It's really, really blurry and out of focus. And this is a, a, a result of using a larger opening, F4 in this case. Now, if I was shooting a landscape photo, like this photo, you want to have everything in focus. You want to, to have the stone in the foreground and the mountains in the background to be in focus. And so in this case, I used F18, I believe. So uh, that's the difference that Aperture plays, and it's a pretty large one. Now, bouncing back to ISO, uh, for example, this this photo here is ISO 100 because I was shooting on a tripod. I could uh, use whatever shutter speed I want. So this is ISO 100. So when we zoom in here, you'll notice that there's just there's no noise at all. It's nice, clean, no noise. Here's another ISO 100 photo. It looks like this when you zoom in. Zero noise once it loads. <laughs> it's taking its time loading, but okay. Yeah, see, no noise whatsoever. Now, if we go over to this photo, you cannot get this shot at ISO 100. I had to bump my ISO up to ISO 6400. So this is 6400 ISO, and so now when we zoom in, you see, oh wow, look. Well, once it goes sharp, wait for it to load. Yeah, look at all that noise, and it's just because stars are and night skies are really dim and you just can't get this shot without using a really high ISO so in this case I had I had to do that so that is ISO and aperture represents the size of the opening and the depth of field that you have now the the last thing is your shutter speed shutter speed remember is the length of time that your sensor is exposed to light. You have your shutter that it opens the door, closes the door. And that whole time it's soaking in more light. So if we used a really long shutter speed, it's letting in lots of light. So going back to that night, night sky photo, this is a 30 second long exposure. So it, I, it had 30 seconds that let in as much light as it could. But you can't do that and shoot action. When you have action, you need a very brief moment of time that way you can freeze the action and so in this case this is a one one thousandth of a second so very just a you know a fraction of a second that this shutter was open and that that allowed me to freeze the action uh, the same is true for something like this this is one thirty two hundredth of a second and when you zoom into the water you can see that even the water is just like frozen frozen in time because it's just a minuscule amount of of time that it's open now on the other hand if you're shooting motion and you have a really long slow shutter speed it would look like this this is a hundred and seventy nine second long exposure a very long exposure and when you do that the water just turns to glass it turns into this fog and it's a completely different effect and tripods are what allow you to do this because obviously I cannot handhold a three minute long <laughs> exposure so tripods come into play uh, for this type of photography and that's why landscape photographers use tripods so often is because it allows us to shoot at ISO 100 all the time and it allows us to use whatever shutter speed we we want um, and sports photographers it doesn't matter as much because they're using a really fast shutter speed so they they can handhold those speeds so you know that that's kind of ex showing you the effect that these different um, that shutter speed has on a, on a photo, aperture has on a photo, ISO has on a photo. Now, the thing to keep in mind, the reason it's called an, I, an, an a exposure triangle is because if you change one side, if you shorten one side, you have to compensate with the other ones. So, for example, this NFL game was fairly bright. Uh, much brighter than like a high school football game. So here I was able to uh, shoot at one thousandth of a second because I needed to freeze the action. F 2.8 because I needed to let in as light as much light as I could because I had to use that fast shutter speed. And then lastly, I pick my ISO to kind of compensate and to make up 
give me enough exposure to make those settings work. So I pick my shutter speed, my aperture first, because those are kind of dictated by the situation. And then my ISO changes to suit whatever I need, whatever I need light wise. So in this case, it was ISO 2500. Now, if we go to this high school football game, I'm using very similar settings, one one thousandth of a second, f2.8, but I had to go all the way up to ISO 8000 in order to be able to get enough light into my camera. I needed that one thousandth of a second to freeze the action because football players run fast and when they hit each other, the, you know, you have to freeze the action or else you end up with blurry shots. And so... ISO 8000 is what it took and it took a lot of noise reduction and stuff and because there's there's definitely penalties for that when you zoom in here and you look at his face once it goes sharp here eventually look at how much noise is in this photo compared to this photo this one is uh, you know it's just a much cleaner photo and then you compare that to this one where I'm, I got to shoot at f5.6, 132 hundredth of a second. And when you zoom in here, you can see there's zero noise. There's no noise because I'm only at ISO 200 because it was nice and bright and sunny. So you always have to compensate for your other two, uh, your other two settings. So you start with your shutter speed because you, you kind of go into it knowing that like this is a this is a situation where I need a fast shutter speed and then you pick your aperture based on how bright the room is and then you compensate with your ISO. Hopefully this helps. I know it's a little bit daunting to jump into shooting manual for the first time, but it really is worth it because you can, you know, get the images that you see in your head onto your camera. You can take control of your camera and make it do what you want it to do once you understand aperture shutter speed and ISO. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me, nickpagephotography at gmail.com. Leave a message in the com in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe, watch my other videos, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much.